it's working right straight out the bag working right lockdown workshop and we are here again it's the pinnacle uh, we're going to finish up where we left off uh, if you remember last time we were looking at if we could get away with uh, um, doing something with the what the don't even, don't even know what that is uh, we were looking to see if we could get away with uh, uh, rebuilding the bottom bracket on this uh, I think the conclusion we came to was we could do but they're proprietary bearing and I couldn't find anywhere that fitted them uh, I did find I could get the entire same bottom bracket for, fi for a fiver which was absolutely brilliant but I was going to have to install it with a wrench um, not the proper tool you cannot buy the tool for those anywhere so decided to do the sensible thing hopefully it's a sensible thing uh, I've got a standard Shimano Altigra uh, bottom bracket the uh, good thing about that is is um, two years down the line if it self destructs I've got loads of bearings to rebuild them I've got the plastic inserts because they're actually a 25 centre with a plastic insert that then takes them to 25 uh, if the bearings wear out uh, and jam they don't start cutting into the uh, the drive shaft of the um, the crank itself which the old bearings have done to a certain extent so hopefully we can save this if not I do have an Altigra uh, that I've got spare that I could sell Steve um, or let him have or something like that but I'm kind of hoping these aren't too bad uh, I think the bearings run in a slightly different place as well and hopefully with the the plastic I should should mean we're okay with this so I'm kind of hoping that we can rescue this and that this does fit a standard Shimano it should do I've done the measurements that's 24 um, this is a Shimano copy so it looks like it's a prime or a or something um, I can't find the uh, any any manufacturers marks on it but uh, I'm guessing it's a prime given the bottom brackets a prime there's not even anything on the outer rings um, but there you go so we'll uh, we'll stick this in uh, and we will uh, 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 we'll see how we go we will uh, just clean out that bottom bracket a bit though because it is a bit uh, it is a bit of a mess so uh, let me get you set up and you can see what there we go look for the flash right uh, I'll just use a little bit of degreaser on this to start off with if I can find it finally filled up the uh, the parts washer. I'm probably going to uh, do something similar with the uh, thing. Doesn't want a lot of this. It just wants a quick wipe out with a bit of de grease. There is some grease in there already, and I'm just worried it's holding a bit of uh, grit. So we want to make sure that these go in clean. Always. Uh, always get your finger in your bottom bracket and make sure it's clean check your bottom bracket because nobody's going to check it for you it does make me laugh have you seen the uh, the new uh, alerts well they're not new they've been coming out for a while if you've got the fitness app enabled on your iPhone and literally every day it tells me to check my ring you need to check your ring because nobody's going to check it for you uh, I'm just going to give this a quick light degrease actually the bike's in a bit of a uh, a bit of a state to be honest so uh, let's see if I can uh, just give it a quick light I don't clean bikes by the way in case anybody starts uh, questioning this bottom bracket uh, top, that top set looked a bit bit angry but it looks okay actually I think it's just a bit of muck so just want to get all the the road grime and film off that's built up on the bike over the winter because it has been ridden in the winter which is do you know what it's probably the best thing you can do is ride your bikes in the winter weirdly I'm not sure if these are carbon forks because most most aluminium frames have carbon forks but I'm not sure if these are but, uh, yeah, like I said, they're an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. They're a bit, a bit like the Planet X, the the pinnacles, in that they uh, they focus on having a well-made frame, but 
but not you know the mo but they but they also make sure that they've got decent components on the frame as well as opposed to some of them you know they make a big deal about you getting a you're getting a specialized frame and you know bah 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 brilliant this you know built-in shock absorbers and then they're going to stick a tiger or a sora um set up on it so uh you know it's it's, it's a 105 drivetrain on this okay the crank's not but the, the crank's not the important bit the only thing you're going to get with an altogra or a thing or a 105 crank is is additional lightness I mean, you're, you're going to build some lightness into your bike but with the 105 and the Altegra group sets, what you're actually buying is reliable shifting and smoother shifting under pressure. Which, you, you know, the saw is okay, but once the saw starts to wear, it can be very finicky. I never said that though on some bikes. I've had, you know, it's, it's hard work getting the Altegras to, to dial in because of the way they, they route the cables. And it puts too much pressure on the cables. Some of the... Uh, some of the Planet X's uh, where they put Altegras on, on bikes, frames that they bought and that the frames weren't necessarily designed for the more modern group sets. So that that, uh, that Holdsworth I had was a nightmare. Really, really stiff uh, front ring changes on it. I can't remember if we said that this, uh, this back brake was binding a bit. Yeah. I think we were going to spray some WD-40 on that, weren't we? If I didn't already. Yeah, the front one feels fine, it's this back one. So we'll just wa was a bit of uh, WD-40 on that. Leave it to sit while we're doing this and then we'll, uh, we'll come back to that later. It's the best time to do it now. Well, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Because you're looking at the bottom bracket. Uh, I've done it again. This is why I have the uh, the other camera on normally. There you go. I'm just giving the frame a clean. You're looking at the bottom bracket. So th this is this is dragging. It's not it's not going all the way back. I'm having to push it. So I'll put a bit of WD-40 on it. See if we can get that to soak in and get any better. If not, we'll we'll get it off and give it a quick strip down like we did for that last Planet X that was in, if you've seen that. If not, I recommend you uh, you uh, have a look at that. It's probably come up on the, the links off this one anyway. Right then, that looks a bit better. We'll do the same. The chain could do with, uh, with some as well. Right then, so let's get this uh, let's get this bottom bracket installed, shall we? Do 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 do. So genuine part. Can you see the part number on that? It's uh, SM BBR 60. It's a uh, Altegra bottom bracket. At least that's how it was sold anyway. Uh, 68 point 68 uh, millimeters uh, British thread. Uh, what else can we tell you about it? I think that's about it really. So we'll, uh, we'll just pop this out. So there'll be a left side, a right side, a plastic bit in the middle. Some instructions. Yep, yeah, don't need them. So now it has got a bit of thread lock on here, but to be honest, you don't need thread lock on it. What you need is copper slip because what you don't want is uh, is these fusing into that because when you do drive them out it tends to rip all the gears out, uh, rip all the threads out, rip all the gears out. So what we're going to do is get the copper slip, Grandad Jim's copper slip. I'm just going to put a little bit on, let the, the threads take it a bit, let, let the threads take it through. Sorry, I'm walking in front of you. No, I shouldn't do that. I'll be going to YouTube uh, purgatory for that. Right, 
not going to put any on the bottom bracket itself because like I said it's got thread lock on it anyway. What I'm hoping is that the first through threads will drive that through. You shouldn't get interference corrosion or galvanic interference on the uh, on the bits where the, the thread locker is but it's, it's all the other threads that are there as well. So that's tighten. So this is right hand side so it should be the opposite thread. Again you should be able to tighten this in with your fingers. Nothing more. It's gonna, it is going to get tight when I hit the thread locker which I've just done. There's not a lot I can do about that. Um, get this one in now as well. And you can give the, the little plastic bit a bit of a jiggle. Yuck! Yucky da! Right. It's in this one. So this is one of the new smaller ones. So uh, we will we can use the the fancy tool. But if you put it on that way round, I've got a better tool than that. In fact, I think I have actually got. I left it out. I've left it out. That one. I don't need that. I have actually got the proper tool. I don't need the adapter. Now some of these actually have a knurled outer edge, so you can use them to grip onto. So even though I've hit the thread lock, I can still turn this in with my hands. Okay, I'm using two hands, but I'm not forcing the thread. It doesn't need to be much more than hand tightness. You know, you can run it in with your hand, give it a tweak with your hand. You can give it a tweak with your torque wrench if you want, but you do not want a lot of torque on this. That's it. It's in. It's snug. It's not going to come out. Right? The, the way. You, it, it, it's just not going to come out. <laughs> Sorry for you again. We are recording, aren't we? Not this side, though. So the way to remember it is The right hand side on the bottom bracket goes the opposite way around. It's the opposite to the pedals. So the pedals, the left hand side is a left hand thread, the right hand side is a right hand thread, but bottom brackets are the opposite way around. Don't ask me why, because it would make sense. The crank's going that way when you're pedaling. That's potentially how they undone, but like I said, they ain't gonna come undone. If the bearing seizes, it is it will more likely slip on the shaft than undo this they ain't gonna undo right i'm just going to resort to a uh, uh a socket for this did it have a yes it did just generally so because i've got a bit of cramp in my hands and again don't put a great deal of force through this if you're having to force these threads you're probably doing something wrong Still in left hand thread mode. <laughs> it, even, it even tells you which way. It says tight and untight on there. See? Just snug it up. Doesn't even need to be tight. Uh, have I got what's left of the old one here? Have we binned it? I think we might have binned it or I've taken it down to the house. Some more pots there. That, that got missed out. Now it looks like we might have uh, we might have binned it. It's a shame. I wanted to just do a quick comparison on uh, on the thickness of the original one versus the thickness of this, but it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, it's got plenty of grease in there. It's not going to hurt to put a bit more on this. So again, I will use the. Uh, Fabled red grease on this one. So you want to make sure you've got some on there to make sure that that seats down on the splines properly. You want some down there. And you want some round there. We have cleaned this so anything horrible that's there from uh, 
when it was eating itself and the other one should have uh, resolved itself. Come on, I'm trying to resist having to bang it. I don't like banging them. If you've seen one of the videos of my probe, I like to beat the living shit out of that to get the bottom bracket in. I don't know what was up with that. Okay. That's it. That's snug now. Yeah, we've got the right amount sticking out the other side. Um, if it is an issue, they do come with uh, spacers or you can put a spacer in on uh, either side. doesn't really matter. You, know, you normally put them on the inside. At least I do. I don't know what they did on the, uh, the RAF advert. And put the cranks uh, <laughs> both pointing down. Well, mine, but it was about being an engineer in the Royal Air Force. <coughs> Who knew? Right. Uh, there it is. So these have got. Now I don't like this because it's got a really. This is a. This feels like it's plastic, and it's got a really small uh, six mil. I think it's a six mil. Um, hole in there uh, and I just think that's too small but having said that again it's supposed to be on the other side you're missing all the fun so with these you know the, the drill with these works you tighten this up until it's you normally do it finger tight um, but obviously I can't do it finger tight because uh, it doesn't fit the normal finger tight tool that I would use for this so I'm just lightly turning it in and again it just wants to be a little snug just to put a little a slight bit of preload on the bearing um, but not too much so you know what you're looking to do is actually get it pulling the crank in um, so if you haven't quite got the crank on this is the Right. right, that feels okay. So we just need to tie it, tighten up then now. Right, I'll, I'll bring you round for that. Right, torque wrench. Did you did you start recording? I can't remember. Oh yeah, we're going. Right, you stay watching that. Make sure it doesn't move. While I find what I've done with my uh, little torque wrench. I'm guessing it's a 5 mil. I can't remember what it was. We took it over. We took it off last week, but I think I was a bit concerned about some of these, uh, some of these screws. So I'm gonna have to do this ass about face so I don't get in your way. All right. So let's just check what this is set for. It needs to be set for. It's normally 12. Uh, there's no sticker on this one. Right, so we'll set it for we'll set it for ten. See how that feels. Normally you do twelve on these on the other bikes. It says twelve for genuine Shimano parts. So I can't can't imagine this is going to be any that much difference. Come on. Right, spin that over, smack the camera as you do. No, I'm not over hammered with this screw. So check the other side as well because you've taken the, some of the tension away with by doing that one up. There you see. And the same on this side again. We'll get to a point where it just goes click straight away. I suspect this will be the last one. Yeah, that's it. So that's all good and set now. Uh, 
Right, I think we do need to clean the chain and grease the chain and uh, clean up that back derailleur. I, I know I don't clean bikes. Right, let's just have a quick uh, clean up of that back derailleur. It looks a bit, uh, looks a bit nasty. I can write this on the floor here. I think it looks worse than it, it is because a lot of the rust out of that um, bearing that gone a bit manky was uh, all over the wheels and rims. So we'll uh, we'll give that a good clean and we'll get some uh, we'll get some we'll put the chain through the chain cleaner, which I don't happen to have up here. So we'll have to do the manual approach, which is just get some degreaser on it and then I'll uh, I'll rub some oil on it. Yeah, get some degreaser on the cloth, run the, the run the chain around a bit. Uh, what I will do is, is give that a quick clean up as well. I will use WD-40 for this one. Yeah, WD-40 actually makes quite an efficient degreaser, but it's got an extra bonus in that it, it does actually uh, you don't need to re-grease it afterwards, so you can do the oily rag restoration with it. Oh, it's looking all right, actually. That. Right then, let's get the wheel on and see if it sounds any better. Actually, I think we're going to end up having to clean these wheels as well because these these wheels are a bit scabby. The front one's not so bad, but the back one looks terrible. So uh, yeah, that looks pretty uh, pretty minging. Right. Put in the parts wash a bit. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's worth it. I don't want to get it all wet as well. Just put a bit. Of I think it's supposed to be greased me foam. Right. Let's get a. Uh, get a cloth. Need to get need to get better behaved with these rags because I've only got so many rags and I keep using a whole t-shirt instead of just cutting a sleeve off. <laughs> I mean, paint's coming off there. Don't, don't use the, uh, the WD-40 method to clean your rims. Use a, use a good degreaser. Then ideally hit it with a degreaser, something like that. So that's how that's Halford's uh, gunk. Uh, no, it's not Halford's, it's, it's gunk, but I got it from Halford's. Um, it's engine block degreaser. It's about a tenth of the price of the muck-off stuff, but it's exactly the same chemical. Um, you're just not paying because it's not a bicycle and it, it works just as well so use that or use muck off spray it on leave it to sit and then get the hose pipe on it uh, I'm not entirely sure where his brakes have been on this one I think uh, he's kind of extended his braking surface a bit so I think they will have to check the inner brake block well, it looks like it's been braking all the way down the rim there so I'm not sure how long these, these rims are going to last anyway so we've had to do a major repair on the the axle which may or may not work but it it might be he needs a new set of wheels 
because that doesn't look good. We're, we're well off the, the braking surface finishes there but the brake pads are actually um, uh, braking on the rim itself not the braking surface so the, the, the rim itself has got thicker that, that's when it's been braking is a lot thinner so potentially that's weakened the rim now but what we will do is we'll just check and see where where his, where his brakes are set and we'll We'll put them back where they should be. That's uh, that's actually quite bad. Actually, now I've seen that. So if you look, that's about half an inch. And if you look on that one, it's uh, where my thumb is. It's probably actually I think this one's the same. It's it's not as bad as the other side, but it's definitely gone beyond the the braking surface. Is normally a centimetre, and we're close to half an inch there. So uh, that's a, that's a bit of a worry. Uh, let's just get the brush out again. Just give this a quick run off. Like I said, I could put these parts through the parts washer, but it's already on now. If I had the parts washer set up the other day when we got it off, I'd have, I could have chucked it in for a, a soak, done this, and then put it back in again just to rinse it off or even chucked it in the, the ultrasonic but I just want to have a quick look at it see how bad it is it's not it's in fairly, fairly good nick this back cassette looks fairly clean you can see it's cleaning off nicely right that's good right let's stick this back wheel back on I seem to remember this was quite awkward the other day it's uh, I nearly took my fingers off trying to get it in or was that one of the other bikes? Just, just that out. Aha, gotcha. Right, so look at these brake pads. Mm, I think it's the brake pads themselves to be honest. I think they're just too big for the bike. Mm. They look like BMX brake pads to be honest. Right. Anyway, first things first. Um, get a bit of oil on this chain as well. Let me. Uh, I think that's what most thing about this chain is missing is a bit of oil. Certainly sounds better. That sounds a million times better. If you remember how it sounded when uh, when we first got it. Can you see everything you need to see? Yeah. Right. Just the WD. Oh, that's uh, that's silky smooth. Gears are changing nicely. Even, even let the oil do its thing. That's good. Yep, they're going nice. I don't have to massage them a great deal. Right, so what we've got to do now is just have a look at that and sort out that uh, wobbly back wheel. 
So I'm going to do it in situ in the frame. I haven't got my uh, jig that I use for wheel balancing here. So we're going to, we'll have a bash of doing it. It's going to be really hard for you to see unless I put you kind of there. I don't know if you can see the wheel at that point though. Well, you might be able to. That's the bit you're looking for, it's the gap on that wheel. Right, let's go and find the spoke spanner. Hopefully this one will fit because this is my favourite one. What we will do is we will wind these back down. It's possibly the easiest way to do this is to just crank the brakes on so that they they catch. We've got an adjuster on the front as well. That one all the way up to there. No, we haven't. Now we're getting somewhere. Alright. So we'll slacken hopefully these will fit. Oh. Nope. That's a shame. Let me go find the other one. Right, so it wasn't the blue one, so I'm guessing it's the red one. Yep. Alright, so we just need to slacken off this side a bit. Come on, don't be awkward. That's the, that's the biggest one we've got. I'll have to go and have a look at the other spoke spanners if this doesn't work. That one wants tightening. that one no, it's not liking that slackening off bit no nope, that one's seized completely all right let's just take this one across again then ideally you don't want to tighten against a spoke no oh right well that'll be why we've got a snapped spoke a bit of a pisser. Right. Weirdly it's just the end that's snapped off. Let's see if we can... Uh, this might cause a few issues then because I... hopefully we've got some spokes that'll fit that. Weirdly I found a spoke floating around in here again. I don't know what I did with it. these wheels the more I think these wheels are very much on their last legs. I'm trying to remember where I kept all the spare spokes. I think they might be down at the other workshop. Again it's one of those things. I 
I can't remember where they ended up. Let's see if we've got them now. Weird. Let's just have a look see if in here. In the spoke I found that I might have chucked in here in the top box. It's typical because I needed a uh, I needed a quick fix on this I could have done without uh, oh here's a spoke. Right, another spoke. Right, I've got one spoke. I'm putting money on it doesn't fit that. No, that's too. Uh, right, we might have to. Uh, are there any more that are like that while we're here? Well, that would explain. Uh, there's a few loose ones there. Can't really do much now until we. Uh, until we get this spoke out. I need to be careful we don't lose it either. We'll go and have a look uh, down in the workshop. I might have another one. I might have some other sizes. If not, we'll have to order one. Should be here by tomorrow if I do. Now well, that might be the easiest solution because I can't find these other spokes. At least they're flat and they're not. Uh... Not where you are. You're over there, aren't you? All right. Don't lose that. Yeah, so that is, yeah, I've, I've put the bend in it to help me get it out, but the, uh, don't know if you can see that, the ends, the ends snapped off, that's the bit that goes on the inside. Of course it's on there as well, so, uh, and it is the, yeah, it's the outside one, so we've got to, we've got to take the, uh, we've got to take that off, but the, fortunately the one I've got here that I've found, is, is about a centimetre too long and I don't have a tap to do that so what we'll do is we'll just measure this up and then I'll go and have a quick look down at the other workshop where I think I might have some more but uh, yeah I don't know where they are they used to have them in a little tub but I think they've uh, they've got chucked in a box so we'll have a we'll have a quick look oh right okay right I had a quick scan on the internet uh, I've managed to find a set of spokes. I've got a box of them, so it so works out a couple of quid per spoke. Uh, I'll just stock them up because I thought I'd got a couple of different sets. Can't find them anywhere. I'm guaranteed they'll turn up. Uh, I pretty much got the size. It's it's nowhere near right for that. I couldn't even, even if you put it in there, it completely misses the, the first of the threads. So I think those were off a mountain bike. Um, <coughs> or, or possibly off a front wheel. Um, we're going to have to strip down that wheel to get to it. I have let the spoke disappear to the inside of the thing, so we'll try and get that out. Uh, so I do need to strip that wheel down. I've ordered a set of brake pads for the back as well, because those brake pads are shot. That's why they're eating into the rim. It's not because they're badly adjusted. They're well past, they're almost into the, the metal. So I'm surprised they work at all. So we'll get them off, we'll get the, the, the back caliper off as well. We'll strip that down, we'll get that cleaned up. We'll strip down the back wheel, get that ready, and then when the spoke comes, I can just lob it in tomorrow, hopefully. So we'll just crack on with that. I am on a tight schedule. Right, so we've got the back wheel off. Uh, we'll just start stripping this down, and then we'll get the uh, we'll get the other bit off. 
uh, the caliper. Let's get you set up on there so you can see what I'm doing. Can we get you back anymore? No, that's, that's about it where you are. This is why the uh, this is where the other camera is slightly better because you're great for close-ups, but you've you've got two. You're not a wide enough uh, angle, so we'll just uh, let's start. So parts bucket. We'll need that. We need the chain whip. We need that. Let's put on the right way round. That's handy. And we'll take this off again because we just like taking these off. I think I've taken this one off. Yeah, we have because we've stripped the hub down. Now we'll leave that in. So take them two off and shove them. On there, find the fat one, there's the fat one, find the fat one on there, there's the fat one on there, Hop, boom, chuck that in, right then, I uh, need to get the tyre off. We'll need to go for, come find a magnet as well to go see if we can track that uh, that missing bit down. Notice they've got the wrong it's got the wrong size uh, inner tubes in for this style of rim as well, but it's not quite as bad as when you do them on the ones I used to have before. Uh, this is overly tight as well. It will only get worse when you let the pressure out of it. No, don't need to be tight then. In fact, there's an argument you don't need them on this style of wheel, which would then make that a better fit. Right. What we'll have to do is try and rattle that uh, thing down to there and get it out through there. If we can't get it out of the back. Right. Uh, We've got any tie levers in here. I think we had a set in here. Possibly, maybe. I can't see any in there either. That's a bit of a bummer. What we will do just to make life easy, we'll put the gadget on because we haven't used the gadget for a while. Keeps that nice and tidy. Right, let's see if we can get these off. I can hear it rattling. Trouble is, the. I uh, can't remember where I put the. Uh, I could have sworn I had a set of tie levers in there. Box. Maybe not. bike up here either. Right. Let's do it the old way. Get a blunt screwdriver. See if we can coax it out once you get it over the rim. They shouldn't be too bad these, they feel like they're quite loose. No, I need some tie levers. That's proper nine as well. We always keep ending up with this that we've got no we've got we are not quite having all the equipment where I need it when I need it. 
left and I thought we got two lots of tie levers. I must be mistaken. Right, I'll run down to the house and go and get the top. Right, I did actually manage to get it off with my fingers. Right. So you get it out. One rather dodgy looking uh, thing. There's one of these, obviously, that we couldn't get undone. I think it was that one. We might we might have to end up having to swap that one out as well because these just look really badly corroded. Anyway, right. So that that's out. So that we can put this to one side, get that sorted out as soon as the spokes come. We'll just quickly. I'll see if you can see what I'm doing anyway. I think you're zoned in there. Hopefully this is a 5mm. Of course it's going to be full of crap. That's for the same reason I said on the other one. Let's hope it releases. Nope, that's not going. What I don't want to do is uh, Right, let me just uh, don't use your sockets as a hammer, by the way. All right, let's see if we can get this to go. Hmm. Nope. All right. I haven't been down this route before. What we don't want to do is either muller this bolt or make it so that we can't, we, we, we snap this axle that runs through this because then we're looking at a whole set of, we're looking at a caliper then basically. Aha, uh -huh. that's actually coming undone. Right. <coughs> we just managed to free it enough. So again, I'm going to lather this with uh, either white grease or you can see, yes, it was actually the nut that was corroded in the frame, not the. Uh, yeah, you see all that corrosion there, so that wants some, uh, I don't know why they don't do it, that, that just wants some, um, that there was covered in corrosion. And all it wants is just a bit of molly slip, a copper slip on it. Of course it's that corrosion, I can't get it off my thing now. Of course I should have undone the... Uh, cable clamp earlier. Right then, let's see if we can, because uh, I think these are the same as the other ones I took off. So hopefully that will go through there. Yes. 
Oh god, yeah, that, that's absolutely uh, bullet. One of the main problems with aluminium frames. Right, let's move you over here. So let's find myself a fresh tub to start chucking bits in. Get these off and have a look at the state of these. Yeah, you can see they're worn down past the edge, and that that really is. I think the other one's worse because it's actually it's actually rubbing on the top of that one, and that's rubbing further down than it should be. You can see it's been rubbing into the that bit of it, so these were in the wrong place. It's very difficult because of the type of brake block to actually see where they're going as well. So hopefully the ones we bought will be slightly better. They do claim that they are Shimano direct replacement ones. Right, let's see if we can just get this to free up a bit rather than just uh, probably not like I think it needs a bit more just just fits such a mess of uh, guess how it goes together on the last one um, right, that goes on there so we'll keep that together with its uh, with its washer this time and put it the other way up I don't think it was that one that was the problem, I think it was this one. Because that's got a different size altogether. I just remember what it is I like about these brakes. Nothing. Look away! Look at the shit piling up there. Tell you one thing again that, that possibly a local bike shop wouldn't do this again. They would be uh, very much on the lines of uh, now you need a new set. Oh, right, that's, that's uh, yeah. We we know this already because we did this the other day. We have to undo that knot there, which I can't remember if it was a it was a tiny one. It was a tiny whiny one. I don't want to muller my uh, I don't want to muller my decent ones. I think that's the one. Two point five. No, that's annoying. Yeah, it's that badly corroded. I can't get the uh, can't get the Allen key out. Really don't want to put a bit of heat on it either. That's annoying. Uh, trying to think how we can do this without taking without getting that out. I don't think we can. So we're looking here. I don't think we've got anything smaller in there. Have we got anything up here? In there? Have we got any tiny whiny ones in here? It's 
that one. Oh. Yeah, they're all they're all getting the same. They're just uh, they're just eating it out. I'm wondering whether they. Uh, we've got a slightly bigger torx. We could knock in there. I think that's too big. I think that's too big too. That's annoying. I think that's even small, that one. That's tiny whiny. Tiny whiny. So we ain't got any really tiny ones in here because we, we've probably mullered them all already. To get a bit of heat on that. I wonder whether somebody's already done that once before. There's a the trouble is there's a plastic washer on the inside, and I need to replace that if I uh, if I muller it. And it is it is proper wallered out now, though. Unfortunately, I wonder if I've got something else that can in there that I can use to get it out. Yeah, might have to drill that out. I think we're going to have to drill it out. Because I can't fix it with it in. So this is where we find all the drills. Oh no, all the drills are here now, aren't they? drill bit here. See if we can get that to uh, sometimes just by drilling them and heating them up with the drill that drills knackered. So we'll see what we've got in here. I think that one might do it. I think we're through. We've drilled the grub screw out, I think, so we're going to try and... That's that badly corroded onto there, even that won't shift. It's freed it up anyway, but I'm not entirely uh, happy that we've uh, we've fixed the problem. So I think we still need to drill that out and re-tap it. I'll not be happy till we've got that out. It's worth to do one of those reverse drills to drill it out. Really don't want to be doing this today. Right, let's 
let's see if we've got something else now that's a bit bigger that we can knock into there to get that out size up If I can get it out and save the threads, I can just find another... <laughs> we can just find another one to put in there. I think we've got that out. Yep, I think we've got that out. Right. severely look at the state of that all right let's see if we can save this so that's the order they were in don't knock them over I think the best thing to do is let's see if we can get this off let's put my soft jaws back in soft jaws So we didn't get the whole, uh, we haven't got the whole grub screw out. So we have to drill that out a bit more, I think. we've got it so some of it you can see spun off the thread 
So in theory I should be able to re-thread that. We can work out what size thread it is. Well, it's going to have to be that because that's the smallest one we've got. Oh, next one up. Right. That's what we're going with. Biting. Yeah, I think we need to, there's still too much of the grub screw left in, we need to go up a, a drill size. I think it's, a, it's an M4, so we need at least a 3.5 in there. Well, we go up a size anyway. I want an M4 grub now. Put a bit of anti seize on it. I think we'll be away. So, where we found we haven't got any M4 grubs. An M4 screw and cut it off. And this is one of those things that's have millions of group screws, but I think I've just gradually used them all up over the years. Unless we drill it out. I think these are all too big, but I could have sworn we had some, but obviously I can't see any. Not in there anyway. Must be we have one. Alright, so put that on the list of things I need to buy is some assorted grub screws. What we might do is just see if we've got a smaller 
Oh, I'm sticking one of them in. See if we've actually got a small. What's the tiniest M4 we've got? We might have tinier than that. It's annoying because I thought we had got some of these. I thought these were the grub screws that were in. Ah, hold on, bear with me. No, they're too big as well. Right, let's put this back together and then we'll uh, we'll see what see what it looks like with the uh, thing. So let's get the white grease on here. Must still be out somewhere. It's over there. Nice liberal uh, dollop of uh, white grease. See what I'm doing? No, because you're not looking in the right direction, are you? It's better. Sorry, your battery went flat. I was in I was in mid floor. Right, we've got it back together. So that's in, so that's slacking that off. Right, so, but I think that's now. Gone too hard up against that one. This is why you need the, the grub screw, which we haven't got.
here is that that's, that's no jammed against that. So if I hold this now, because that's moving, and then just lock this against it, that should mean we don't need the grub screw. Crack that. Stick that back in there. Oops. Oh, you. The flipping spring fell out, and you can't put the spring in without. No, you don't. I dislike dismantling Shimano brakes, but I think I'm rapidly coming to the conclusion these are worse. Nope. Right, let's get this fastened in before we uh, before we lose it. Right. They all look good. need that tube we had before but I can't remember what it was I did it with. So I'm going to get away with doing it with this one. Yeah, there we go. Right, I think they're doing okay. They're moving. 
they feel like they should do. Shove that on there, I think we can put them back on now. Bang a bit of copper slip around there and uh, hope for the best, I think. Right, let's pick you up. Follow me! Loads around there, loads around there. Brilliant. They actually look like they work well. Right. Put all the other bits back on it. That we can put back on it. a new brake caliper on this back one at some point. temporarily pinch that up there just to see that they are working. They look like they might be. Oh perfect. Yep they're all happy bunnies now. So all we need is the, uh, the new set of brake pads on them and then we are we are good to go. So all right we are ready now. All we need to do is just wait for the pads to come in again. So it looks like this is definitely going to be a part two, but uh, jobs are good and so we'll just leave it there. Next time you see me, hopefully we've got some parts. Whew, right, back. Parts cannon loaded, parts arrived, off we go, continuing with part two to get this thing put back together again. So uh, everything's running nice and smooth on the uh, on that side of things we've just got to sort the uh, the back wheel out so if you remember uh, we got a spoke out uh, and I think we got to the point where we just rebuilt these uh, so we'll have to see how they go sorry passers by outside and I'm wary about recording people that I haven't got permission for it's a bit of a thoroughfare through there right so where were we this um, yeah we've got the parts We've got some brake pads, uh, we've got some nice genuine Shimano 105s, uh, spot on. So if we do try and get some 105 brake pads, uh, some brake calipers to replace these uh, these here, we're, we're, in, we're in good shape. Um, so we'll get those slapped on there as well. Uh, in fact it's probably easier to get these on now. 
before we do. The only thing with these, these, these are the slightly cheaper ones. They're not the ones that a cartridge where you can replace the brake pad after it's a, it's a one it's a one shot deal. Oh, I was looking for some of them, but it's more than likely we'll end up with a set of them if we pick up a set of 105 calipers. So we'll keep an eye out for them for Steve anyway, and I'll see if I can pick up a set. I might have a set of Altegra, to be honest. Um, so that, that might be an option, is to stick some Altegras on. I don't actually know how many gears this is, to be honest. I haven't counted. Perhaps we ought to have a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, it is an eleven speed, so that's okay. Um, yeah. So I have got a, a full Ultra group set on the, the old turbo bike that I don't use now. The only thing is it hasn't got any shifters, but I suppose push to come to a shove, I could, uh, I could uh, let Steve have that because I would probably only get um, um, so much for it. What it has got that might be interesting for him is it, it, it is actually a, uh, it is a TT setup I've got. Um, the only trouble is you can't run both systems. I um, don't think you can. There's probably a way of doing it. You can run disabled things with double on one cable, so I don't see. Anyway, we're waffling. Let's just crack on with this. Otherwise, we're going to be here all flipping night. Uh, right, what are we going to do? Brake pads. So let's stick these on first. We'll zoom you in. In fact, now let, let's show you why you're, we're, we're all in a bit of a funny place at the moment. So uh, um, if you've watched the short, you'll have seen this. Yeah, there we go. We've got the. Uh, We've got the Ducati on the uh, on the ABBA Skylift, so I can move it move it around. Um, I normally wheel it outside, but I'm a bit conscious that um, there's been a lot of motorbike thefts around here. Um, there's always motorbike thefts around here. York, Yorkshire is particularly bad. Rotherham, Doncaster area, absolutely terrible. It's just the police don't do anything. There's kids riding up and down the street out there every single night, no number plates, no helmet, balaclavas on. You know, 10 grand's worth of somebody's bike and the police do absolutely nothing. So anyway, that's my rant over. Um, and most of them are running drugs for county lines as well, so go figure. I wonder who's getting a back pocket there. Anyway, it's a bit controversial, but probably true. Uh, right, let's get these wheels on. Brake pads, not wheels. Right. There should be an arrow that says direction of travel. Oh, there you go. Macro. Come on, make an effort. Might it help if the focus box was actually where. Can you see that? I don't know which side it is. It's at this side. You see that? There's a little arrow anyway. That that tells you which way the wheel's going. So that one needs to go on that side because the wheel's going that way round. That makes sense because the cuts into it, spreads it out wide. If it was going the other way round, it'd be pulling the water in. Um, with these, it's not the same as the ones on the, uh, the the Planet X that I had the other day, where if you brake, the brake pad can actually come out of the shoe because uh, they are the ones that you can slide in new brake pads. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how these go. Now the only thing with these is they don't have an adjuster plate so you're kind of relying on the uh, on, on the, uh, the things being in the right place. So we'll, we'll open them up anyway. Um, we'll need to fasten them down in the right place because we're going to use the shoes to true the wheel up. Because I can't be bothered to set the wheel true up, it's buried somewhere. I have no idea. It's an old turbo trainer. You've seen me do it. I have a turbo trainer and I, uh, I tie wraps and bolt things on. At some point I'm going to weld that up or I'm just going to completely bin that off and I'm just going to make my own train thing. I don't know if I've got enough metal though. I'll see what I've got spare from doing the chairs and I might sacrifice some of that metal. Um, now I have got some spare wheels that potentially Steve could uh, uh, we could do a deal on. I've got a spare set there which uh, I've just had donated. Um, you 
are being a bit sulky at focusing today, aren't you? Come on, that's better. Right, yeah, so brake pads are on. We'll use these to trim them up. Uh, like I say, I was going to get um, the tree table made out of all the spare bits of wood. Sorry, it's like Piccadilly Circus out here tonight. Right, uh, I'll just move you over here and we'll get the new spoke in the wheel. We'll get the wheel back in uh, and the block on and the tyre on. Um, we'll probably true it up without the tyre on. I think it's easier to do uh, in case I have to, any more issues with any more of these spokes um, snapping. But then we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. Right, back at the table. Uh, right, spokes. Of course, after I ordered the new spokes, um, it's rather a large box for the amount. I might have no idea how many spokes they ordered in the end. There were a couple of places that had the size I needed, but they weren't the right gauge because these need to be 14. Right, a lot of swearing later because I'm getting a bit effing jeffed off with it tonight. Though that was my fault. I couldn't be asked to change the card because I wasn't sure whether the cards I'd brought up had still got still far enough not downloaded yet. But anyway, I found a card that I got the dishwasher on, so um, I think we're all right. Right, so what I was saying was, I think most of these that I found were too long. So these should be a good match for the, the naked one. Um, hopefully they are, or I'm going to be a bit pissed off. Yeah, they're as near as I could get. So they're about probably three mil out. So they're a little bit long, but it's, it's not going to hurt, I don't think. Uh, the threads go to about the same area, probably two mil long. It's difficult to tell uh, if I match the shoulders up. Actually, yeah, about two mil out, which I thought they were. I think I think I was looking for about eighty five, but I couldn't find anywhere that did eighty fives. So these should be uh, they should be spot on. Uh, That's good, that fits. Now I'm tempted to put the original uh, uh, piece back on, but um, I'm slightly wary about doing that because uh, of uh, the fact that they are all fairly scabby. Let's just uh, compare these to these here, because this will this will be this will be the annoying thing now that um, that one wants to go in the bin because I've cut that one down already, so that's no good. I've thrown out the good one. So we've got a spare nipple there. They're fairly short nipples, then. Um, so these were the ones that I did have. I think they're all the same length. Now I think these are too long. Yeah, these they're all too long. So we'll. So they are all slightly longer. But what we'll do is we'll chuck them all together so we've got them all in one place. And that's the broken one. So bugger off. Now it's quite feasible that one of these could be slightly longer than the others. In fact I would say that these on this side are going to be longer than those on that side but not by much. Right so uh, what you're looking for is which on that side you need to thread it. So we've got an outer, an outer and this needs to be an inner so this one needs to come through from this side. Oh we've got another one that's snapped there. We have. So that, I don't know if you can see, that one's snapped as well, exactly the same thing, head's come off. So we'll uh, we'll pull that one out as well, it's a good job I did get a few more. So there's two snapped ones. Right, what we'll do is we'll quickly go around and check the rest of them, because it does seem like the, the, those on the inside seem to be suffering with their heads coming off. So there's definitely one on that side. I wonder whether it's had a bit of trauma, because it, it, it's in a very similar place. But that definitely explains why the wheels yeah, to have two of them with the heads come off, that's, that is very unusual. Right, so what you're looking for as well is you're going to make sure you get this on the right side. So this needs to be on the inside, which means I need to thread it under there. Thread it through there. And then, and into there. And that's all good. So that's where it should be, just check all the way round, they go under, 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 so that's fine. We just need to pick a nipple, any nipple. It would be nice if I could find the original nipple actually. I suspect I took it down to the workshop with me. Yeah. 
Well, we've got to take one off on the other side, and we've got to take that other that other broken one out anyway. So we'll get to see what size they are. Uh, in fact, we will do that now if I can find the. Uh, remember where I put the tool. Yeah. Right, so it was the bigger one, it was the red. So where's the other broken one? It's there, that one. So it's that one with the the magnet on. I don't, if, I don't even know if Steve's still got that on his bike, to be honest. I can't see it. So I'll we'll take that off and you'll hopefully remember to put it back on. So can you see this? So hopefully this will come off. There we go. Well that's just uh, that's just decided to liberate itself anyway. Um, unlike last time, what we'll do is we'll just feed it straight through. Turn the magnet off. Okay, off. Right, and then what we can do now is see what size uh, nipples they are. So that one would be okay. So we need another one of these. Which will probably be, hopefully, be one of these. Yeah, they are exactly the same length as that one, so that's good. Um, I've only got two nipples here. One of them's a long one, and one of them's a stubby one. Now the stubby one does look a similar length to that. And we've also got a long one. Now ideally you want to keep them all looking the same, but uh, we might not have much of a choice. Let's, uh, actually we're going to be alright, so let's just steal a, steal a nipple off this one. Because they're all chrome nipples, they're, they're, they're nice of those chrome nipples, but... Uh, so we need to feed this one in now, same, exactly the same routine. Find the hole it came out of. Uh, this time it feeds from the outside in. Now when they're feeding from the outside you've got to pick your spot that you go for because if you go for that one you won't get it out. If you put it in that if you put it in there you won't get it out. So you've got to aim for that bit there. Um, actually no that's it's probably alright but where's the hole I'm aiming for? The hole I'm aiming for is there so actually ideally I want to be aiming for that gap there because that's the nearest one I can get through and then I've got not got to take it round as many so that's in same again so we're going to make sure which side this goes so the inside ones go on the outside of that so over there because it goes on the, the inside one uh, I think it needs to go over that I know it would help if we did it right we've not done it right in the first place Mark, get a grip. Inside out. Thought it was odd because I'd already said it. It was another inside one that had gone. Okay, so with these you can thread these through that nice little hole there because it's on the inside. Right, so it's got to go behind that one. then inside that one so it should be outwards goes behind and then up right I think that's laced up properly so now we're just going to drop that down there so get get an old spoke because this is a, these are a brilliant tool for this so what you've got to do is get behind the uh, the the rim tape liner 
I don't like calling it rim tape because it, it is rim tape but it, most people refer to rim tape as tub tape or the stuff that you put on tubeless tyres now so it's more of a rim liner and they're usually really fiddly to get out so try and be careful not to rip it or damage it and they generally stick this one's a rubber one which is unusual you don't often see rubber ones anymore they are way better I'll just put that out there for everybody to have a go at me. Yeah, so there's two consecutive ones there. They've just snapped. So I think we have had a bit of trauma. You can see there's some damage to the rim as well. So I, I am wondering if uh, we have had a bit of a, a moment. Right. Uh, trying to work out the best way to do this. What I tend to do normally is, sh is shove this through. Um, your friendly... Uh, What you need to do is find a screwdriver with a nice head on it, stick your, your magnet on it and then find out they're aluminium so they don't stick. So the other thing you can do is stick a blob of grease on. No, that's going to be awkward. Right. There is another cheat you can do here. Of course, I've already thrown the. Uh, the something come from? One of those long ones. Yeah, just just get a little bit of a thread on the end of it. Right. And then find your hole. Feed it through and hopefully if, if you're lucky yes right so try and pin it now and then there we go So you go top tip, use another spoke to feed it through with a little bit of a thread and then just hope that uh, these aren't too long. They shouldn't be. The threads generally don't start on the end of these until uh, um, quite far up the, uh, the, sh the, the shackle. So even though it looks like you've run out of threads, you haven't because the, the threads don't start. Right, we'll just do it up so it's gentle, it's, it's in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give the spokes a good old rattle and a thing and see if we can get another one to pop off and break. So that's the same trick again. Grab me uh, a little bit. Find the other one. It's there. So what we're going to do is put it through the hole again. Like I said, that because there's no... Uh, So you might have to jiggle the spoke around in the hole to get the... Uh, I think I've gone past it. Let's try that again. That's it. Because there's no thread on the... Uh, there's no thread on the bottom bit, you can actually feed it quite a long way down. So now what I want to do is try and get this out without it unscrewing. A spoke winder for this bit. I don't really need it. As soon as you've got a bit enough through, <coughs> you can drop <coughs> drop the spoke key onto it. Now, what it might be is that. <coughs> oh dear. I hope I'm not picking this up. We had visitors round at the weekend, and both 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 of their girls were were made up with cold, and I thought, great. <laughs> I've only just got over one set of illness that's screwed all my training up. 
but now we're into the training I really can't screw up right there's a bit of tension on that now so that's that's fine I'm just going to carefully put this back try and be careful when you put this back because if you get it off to one side again it's an absolute pig to get it back in these rubber ones tend to be better because they tend to hold the shape of the rim a bit better right so that's on right let's stick it on the back wheel um, <coughs> without the gears on and we'll uh, and without the chain in the way as well and uh, we'll uh, Don't fall out of there. Please don't fall out. It's just goodwill and good intentions holding this in at the moment. Right. Yeah, I know I'm blocking your view. Oh yeah. Right. Ideal I want this as close to where it's going to end up in the frame so I know it doesn't need to be massively tight just as long as it's in the cups properly. <laughs> Some damn sight straighter already. Right, so I should be able to tell which of these ones there were. What we will do though is we'll just have a quick run round and just see which spokes are really bad. So you'll probably find these are really tight now because they've um because <coughs> those have slackened off. Right, so these are really loose. Um what's weird is though they are on opposite sides, but we'll uh, we'll try and uh, bring it back. So noise is a good indicator of how close you are. It's only slightly down now. That's very loose. Right, so see how that looks in there. It's not that bad actually. Right. So if you can uh, shift the bike out of the way so you can uh, you can come and stand here and see what the rim's doing. Brake pad's not in a brilliant place. Right, so that's snagged already. Trying to work out where the new ones were I've put in. <coughs> Can't flip and see them. How's that possible? Oh, they're there, those two. Right. Right, so there's a couple, oh, that is one of them. Right, so that one's tightening up. I think we're on the, uh, should be back on the green now with these. I think I might have tightened one of these up the other day. So we need to slacken it off. Oh, that's the one I couldn't move. No, that's the one I couldn't move.
so let's have a let's go, go on this side this time. Alright, so this one needs a small adjust. Slacken that one off a tad, it sounds slightly high. So what you're trying to do is balance this, you're not over tightening it because if you just tighten one side up you, you're putting more stress on that spoke on the opposite side as well because you're pulling against it. So slacken off one, tighten up another. Right, so there is a little bit of a kick onto this side. Right, so probably slacken off one of these. If it'll let me, it might not. These spokes, some of them are in a pretty bad way. Hopefully this one will tighten up. Yeah, sometimes you have to crank them quite a long way to get them to snap. <laughs> Let's see. That's pretty good actually, I'm quite pleased with that. Right, so while we've got the tire off and we haven't got that distracting me, We'll just get these, uh, these done off. I think that looks like a six. I don't think it will be. I'm sure it'll be a five. Yeah, it's a five. Right, so oh, we've got these here. Let's get them. Uh, good Let's just see how they grip. Nothing's going over the top of the rim. That's good. They're aiming for the top of the rim. Spot on. Then brakes are working quite well now. See how close we've got them. Do you know what? That's not that bad. I'm quite pleased with that. Right. Looks like that's. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Let's uh, look at my handiwork. So this had got in excess of a quarter of an inch travel on both sides. So it was nearly half an inch out across. So if I uh, spin that now. Yeah, you need to, uh, you need to look at that really, don't you? There you go, I'm quite pleased with that. We'll We'll take that. Cool. Two spokes replaced. Two brake pads replaced. New bottom bracket. Let's stick the cassette back on. Let's get the tyres back on. Let's give it a quick fettle and then we will uh, send it on its way. Job's a good one. As they say. There's my magic. Right, I missed that. <coughs> So I spotted part of the rim tape was in the uh, was in the wrong place. Um, it's been like that for a while though, because you can see the inner tube had crushed it down, and it was actually where the tyre is supposed to bed in. Um, we'll just have a look because there is a direction of travel on these. I'm pretty 
sure I know which way it is but I will check I'm just checking the wear indicator as well it has got two I can still see the two dots so they're fine where is it on the other side direction of travel that's it so cogs on that side that's on that side this goes in this way round right so we're going to prove the theory now the, these tires are probably one of the tightest tires on the market these are what most people moan about these uh, these continental flipping gator skins yeah get it is a gator skin as well but a bit of a pain oh no i've not got no air just realise the pump's down in the. Uh, actually, it's in the. It's in the conservatory. So I can find my. Uh, I should have an adapter, to be honest. In here. In here. This is where we. Um, we haven't got an adapter, and we're going to have to go down to the house. Okay. Right, so I'm going to have to bugger off and fetch the uh, thing. Um, we'll just stick the inner tube in. I think it's probably going to be all right. Normally I'd put a bit of air in it, but I think we're going to be uh, we're going to be fine because we're going to get it in without any issues. Um, tip with these: make sure you get the the inner tube over the rim and in, sit, sat in the rim before you try and put the the inner tube uh, the tire it into its final place of resting. So I can see that's now all the way round it's in. Um, started about quarter of the way round from the valve so that uh, no start just before the valve and then work towards the valve so when you get round you'll, you'll be about there so the valve doesn't come into place. What you don't want is the valve on the opposite side because you need to be able to squeeze the tire in and get it to drop into the groove doesn't really matter, you can jiggle around when you come from side to side. You just What you don't want is it's for you to be trying to do it here when the valve's down there because you won't. So I'll get that round now. So we're in the last bit that gets a bit tricky. Roll it over as far as you can get with your fingers. Go down to the opposite end and just squeeze it and massage it into the centre. So you've got both sets of bead in the middle and that's why you need to make sure the inner tube's in. And then there you go. That's how you do it without tire levers. Spot on that. Right. We'll put this back on. So again, put these on tight now, but don't tighten them up after you've inflated it, because they will they will be almost impossible to get off when your tire is flat. I need to stick that back on too. Should be okay. Right, so we're just going to get some air in that. Uh, I might as well stick that on while we're here before I run down. Right, so that was a uh, that's a knackered one. Boom, got that one in. Right, what's it gonna do? Oh yeah, stick the uh, stick this back on. So that's gonna have to come out. Come on. Fat 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 bit, there you go. Fat, fat, fat bit. Where's the fat bit? Fat bit's there. Fat bit's there. Where did I put the... There we go. So again, make sure that's already on there. It will make uh, and, and nicely bedded up. It will make roll it backwards until you feel it drop in. There you go. 
Whip. Big torque wrench. Get it ready to get it to gut and tight. Remember to put it on the right way around because I never do. And then you find out the things the wrong way around. And I'm undoing it. It's all right left and right at the moment. Right, now we're starting to get some pressure on it. I was right first time. <coughs> Come on, this chain whip is awful compared to the other one. That's it. I do like this torque wrench, shall we? It might be a, not a particularly expensive one, but I know it's accurate because I tested it against the other ones. And uh, It does make a nice loud click, so when you've got these older ones that have got the ratchet on, you, you can hear it. don't know why I took that off. don't know why I've not put it back in. Right. Final assembly. There we go. That's not bad. Right. Just notice those those spokes are still a bit. Those new spokes are still a bit. Uh, just going to put a little bit more tension on both of those. I'm not. Not very happy about those, they need to be a bit tighter. Green. Doesn't really matter because they're opposing each other anyway, so. So much harder to do this when the uh, wheels are back on. It is slightly out still. Red, yep, yeah, red. Won't surprise me if a lot of the others, these spokes aren't going to need replacing soon.
can try and clean up this uh, this rim a bit. It's uh, there's a bit of flaking paint on it, so I'm just going to see if we can clean it up. Just need some air in the tyres. We'll just give it one last uh, check over with the gears so you can uh, relocate yourself and then we can send this one on its way. I think the brakes are okay, they seem nice and balanced. <coughs> you don't need to watch me pump a tyre up. Uh, right. Straight up. nice right just check the brakes are nice and tight we'll send this on the way so let's just recap what we've done rebuilt the axle new bearings tried to clean up the bit that's a bit grungy and a bit manky we've replaced two spokes and straightened the wheel out uh, and we have uh, replaced the bottom bracket uh, and I think definitely um, by the time uh, Steve gets through to racing because he's uh, is racing in a standard duathlon later on in the year I would definitely swap these wheels out because I think they're a bit of a liability but let's not wreck a decent set of wheels uh, in the winter let's get them uh, uh, let's do that in the year uh, let's let's get them on in the summer like I said I've got a pair of Shimano's down there that we donated we'll see if we can cut a deal on them um, <coughs> and uh, I've got a set of Planet X uh, with some ceramic hubs that are pretty good as well so uh, we'll see how we'll see how we get along but I'll, I'll give him a bell let him know it's done anyway right hope that was useful um don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, we'll leave it there jobs are good and <laughs>